go! <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up, guys? How's it going? We what? are uh, we're back. And you look more professionally homeless than you've ever looked before. I'll tell you what. I, I suited up for my professionally <laughs> homeless life. I, I, I like it. it. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm not only professionally homeless, I'm employed and homeless. <gasps> professionally homeless on homeless. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's like looking at Josh, but not looking at Josh. <laughs> it's a very nuts, right? jarring. Yeah. It's a jarring thing. When I when I let my beard go, we're is the same. This is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I figured I had to keep the hat on too because I didn't want to Thor out like you. We can't have two Thors on our podcast. Right? Let's let, let's try it out and see how it goes. You want? I mean, ah, no, 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 <laughs> no. It looks good. Yeah. The long hair. That's how I know you is long hair. Long hair. Yeah. So that that always feels right in my soul yeah well it's interesting so the first time i traveled last year i was like cut everything off so that's like one less thing i have to travel with is soap <laughs> <laughs> so that smelled great last time you were here by the way thanks <laughs> yeah i picked it up in the, in the tail end of the trip i was like i guess soap is a thing i need right <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah uh yeah and then i just like after that i just stopped cutting it and i was like oh i can shampoo and places like yeah <laughs> that's a thing you mean they have soap in other countries too turns out they do yeah i had no mm. idea wow. i mean it's weird like other countries do things too yeah <laughs> you know? no I, <laughs> fake news yeah <laughs> fake news yeah oh let, let's actually introduce him for anyone who hasn't seen it the first one what the fuck are you doing here if you didn't watch oh sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow so. that got that got mean yeah so check out episode <laughs> number four I think it was six. You introduce him and I'm going to check. Okay. Because I think I'm right. This yeah. is Dustin Delator. It's Delator, right? Not Delator. Delator, yeah. Dustin right. Delator. He is uh, professionally homeless. I <laughs> worked with him <laughs> a while back. Yeah. We worked together. He was on episode. Pat is still looking it up. Let's call it six. And uh, six. that was about a year ago. We're going to say four because yeah. four feels right. Okay. So less than 10. Yeah. Under 10. <laughs> so it's been about a year. He's been traveling. He was five. <laughs> <laughs> we were so close. Wow. He so, was five. So five number plus five. Or minus one. So Dustin was number five, and now he's going to be number 19. So closer to four. Nice. No. Well, I'm legal now. You literally yeah. round up. No, you round down when it's not over five. And it is five. No, it's not. It's okay. four. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is Dustin. He is professionally homeless, meaning that he travels a lot. Digital nomad. Correct. Uh, he has a podcast, which are you still doing it? Uh, it's on pause. Okay. Let's say we're in between seasons. Okay. <laughs> they're, uh, right? they're preparing for season two of living in white noise. Life in white noise. Life in white noise. Damn it. Yeah. I was close. Living in white noise could be similar. I mean, it's the whole idea of like everything around us is white noise. And so how do we deal with it? Mm-hmm. And so we just talk about everything from self-doubt to self-awareness and how to deal with fear and stuff like that. It's pretty gnarly. How do you deal with fear? Asking for a friend. Oh, man. Well, you'll have to listen to the podcast. Ah, oh, <laughs> in your face. In your face. I was asking yeah. for a friend. In your Suck face. it. Links down below. In your, <laughs> in your friend's face. Uh, well, anyway, I mean, it's good to have you back. Yeah, it's we've, good uh, to be back. We've moved from over there to yeah. over here. Yeah, you've grown a lot since last time. We've traveled a whole seven feet. Mm -hmm. It's blown my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? I know we talked a little bit before, but... Yeah, so, um, man, I've been... I circumnavigated the world for a second time. Uh, this time I was employed, unlike last year uh, in episode five, mm -hmm. where I was unemployed. Um yeah, so I started freelancing, uh, picked up a bunch of gigs as a web developer, started working, freelancing, um, living abroad. Actually, it was interesting. The reason why I left this year to go travel again was because I was working part time for one client and I couldn't make up enough money to live in the United States. So I was <laughs> like, I can live in Thailand. So that's basically what I did was like. You pay me American money, and I'll go live in Thailand so that you don't have to pay me as much so that the startup can, you know, succeed. Yeah. And so I was just doing that. I was probably working, like, I don't know, 10 hours a week, if that. Oh, that's it? Yeah, like, not a lot. I was not making a lot in every month, but because it's Thailand, everything's super fucking affordable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just did that, and I just kept going around Southeast Asia for most of the year, and then just randomly ended up in Portugal again. 
live there for two months. I hate when that happens. I know. <laughs> it was like, oh, Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll do it. Um, yeah, then I did that. And then I came back because uh, I picked up a couple more clients. And I was like, you know what? I want to see if I can make it in America. Yeah. I hear it's the land of the free and the home of the brave. You should go back to Portugal. <laughs> yeah. It's like the classic immigrant story. I think at this, yeah, right. I like did the immigrant life except with a U.S. passport. It was very easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> they let me everywhere. It was yeah, weird. It was really incredible. I walked right through immigration, <laughs> waved. Hey, everybody. Did, <laughs> did you have that beard at the time? I did I, actually. Yeah. Wow. I thought I they the would beard. flag you for that. Yeah. No. Actually, interestingly enough, I felt more uh, attacked going through Visa in America than any other country. Really? They'd all ask you the same questions, but they're more nice about it abroad. I think I had the friendliest conversation with uh, when I landed in England. Um, we like shot the shit for a while. He's like, so like, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm just traveling the world. And he's like, that's so cool. Like, how do you do it? And obviously like he got all of the questions he needed answered through our conversation, but it was a conversation Yeah. instead of like coming to America and even being an American citizen, they still kind of ask questions of why the fuck you're not in the country. And why like, aren't you here? Yeah. You fucking hate us. <laughs> you, you coming back? <laughs> Where'd you go? Why'd you go? What are you doing out there? <laughs> You know? It's like a really bad relationship. Yeah. It was like an interrogation instead of a conversation. It was like very weird about it. Was it like that every time you've come back? Uh, yeah. And actually, the weird thing was I flew back in Ireland, and Ireland's the only country where U.S. immigration is in Ireland. Yeah. So I went through customs in Ireland to get to America, which was so weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, you go through... Um, you go through uh, the first security, and then you're in the airport, and then mm-hmm. you're like, "Are you flying to America?" Because you got to go through that security too, uh-huh. and then you go through that security, and it was the most annoying thing. I think my flight was at like nine in the morning or something. It was super early, and obviously they're like, "Come two hours before to go through all the security and all that stuff." And I get to where you're supposed to go through American security, which mm-hmm. was actually more strict than just getting through Ireland's own airport yeah it was like metal detector up there and then a pat down down there and um everybody's in line waiting and there's all the security guards like in this back corner just hanging out and we're like can can we go through and they're like we're not ready yet (laughs) and so we waited for like an hour before they opened security to go into america and it was like we're all just sitting there being like why you you guys are there we're here. Yeah. You know, we're both here. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Let's go through some security. Did you make your flight? I made my flight, yeah. Okay. I was wondering, I was like, if we're all in line, like, that flight's not leaving with nobody on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. The so, pilot's just like, where is everybody? Why is no one here. <laughs> Did I, is it me? Yeah. I don't, Yeah. I, that's so weird. <laughs> just, America confuses me. As it a, is. It, there's a lot of things that are just in play, and I don't, I don't like shitting on it at all it's just different Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's just like really unique to see plus it's really cool to be like i'm going through america in ireland somehow i don't know how they made that like yeah i was about to ask if you knew why i have no idea why and why it's the only country in the world that does it yeah no idea aren't there certain tax loopholes going to ireland too maybe I thought there was some... I know there's some banking thing going on in Ireland for some tax loopholes because yeah, Apple's yeah. dealing with that or something. It's like Irish inversion or, or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm bullshitting, but yeah. I know there's yeah. something with Don't Ireland. check that fact. Yes. <laughs> there's a reason I'm not a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it was really weird, uh, but fun. I mean, I was in Ireland for like two days. I wasn't even there long. Actually, Ireland and England, I was the, at the least because they're crazy expensive of all the places I've been. Yeah. Like Portugal's not cheap, but affordable of okay. the Western European countries. Mm-hmm. Um, they're getting a really influx of people now because like they're getting popular, but they're like low key doing it because it's like it's a fucking beautiful country. And the the wine there is crazy cheap and the people are amazing. And I mean, it's just a beautiful country and everything's really nice and really affordable. Um, and, you know, decriminalized uh all drugs 
Oh, they did all drugs? All drugs. Everything. I've said that so many times. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah, I mean. It just makes sense. Yeah. The crazy thing, though, is like it's still illegal. Yeah. But decriminalized, but they really go after the people that are selling it more than they do the people that are abusing it. Well, decriminalized means it's a, a fine, right? Yeah, it's like Instead a slap of... on the wrist kind of scenario. But, like, if they catch you selling the drugs, then they'll kind of, like, be really hardcore on you. Mm-hmm. Um, because they really want to explain to everybody that it's decriminalized. It's not legal. Yeah. Uh, but when you walk around the country, you're like, what does decriminalized mean? Because, like, I walk around every fucking street corner. Some guy comes up to me. We want cocaine, hashish, marijuana. What do you want? I'm like, the fuck man <laughs> i can have it all yeah i and was he's just like you want to smell you want to like... try it you want to smell it and i'm like uh no i'm good man thanks <laughs> i saw you yesterday still said no then I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> third time maybe yeah. i'll say yes yeah you keep you're persistent i like it it's annoying we are friends now <laughs> yeah but they, they get aggressive and they're not even like most of the guys they ran into i think they were like armenian or something weren't even portuguese so you said a lot of people were coming to Portugal. Yeah, anyway. a lot of people. Um, I mean, Lisbon's blowing up right now in terms of like uh, like a destination to go because it's like it's got the Mediterranean feel. Mm-hmm. It's super unique and it has all the hills and the trams and stuff, and it's still affordable. Like in the European Union, it's one of the cheaper places you can go and enjoy your time. Hmm. I mean, I lived there. Although I had a unique experience, I lived in a. Uh, what we actually considered the nomad pad. It was an eight bedroom apartment complex. Um, so eight nomads at one point every month lived there. And I've just lived in one of the eight rooms. And they would cycle out each month. And they cycle out each month. Like some people would stay. I stayed for two of the months and then other people are staying for other months, but it was just like one person who was just like killing it, just being a really awesome person and finding this apartment for us and just bringing people in. And, oh, it um, wasn't even officially a nomad thing. No, it was just one of the nomads was like, I'm going to do this and people can come if they want. And it was awesome. But my rent was 650 euro, which I think translates to like $800. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean, $800. I was in the heart of the city, like down downtown, mm-hmm. walking distance from everything popular. And I mean, that's pretty dope. Yeah, for eight hundred. Yeah, I mean to do that in Orlando. I was gonna that's say like conversely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Orlando's like, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an okay place. Yeah, right. <laughs> Downtown Orlando, nice, beautiful landlocked city. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you say you need for a monthly budget? A monthly budget, like traveling in general. Yeah, tr- I mean the just what you've been doing. How much would you say you spend? Because so it seems me, like a very fun thing to do, but yeah. the flights and and like. Right. Not knowing yeah. where you're going to Yeah, so be. actually I uh, I have this app here that I've been keeping track of all of my expenses in terms of travel. Mm-hmm. And as a key for me, I was like, every month is if I make two grand, I'll spend two grand or less mm-hmm. depending on the country. So like I'll try to stay under two grand a month in terms of like living, just existing. Um, but total, I've been to, let's see how many countries I've been to this year. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten countries. Wow! This year alone, and in flights I spent fifteen hundred dollars, and That's in it? housing I spent about five grand. Wow! Yeah, so it's nuts. But that's because like some of the countries I've been to, like uh, um, I mean most of Southeast Asia is like crazy cheap. So I mean my rent and when I lived in thailand was 250 dollars a month the dream <laughs> yeah it's fucking bananas it's fantastic so <laughs> yeah which is why i went there in the first place <laughs> right it's like oh i can like retire with a thousand dollars in my pocket yeah <laughs> so wh- where great. are you getting flights from um a lot of the places that i look at is like skyscanner.com mm-hmm. or momandu or um there's kiwi and one more i can't remember google flights too i mean they do an all right job. It's just cheaper to fly. Yeah. And so, yeah. like, you just... But the beauty of being professionally homeless, in the sense, is, like, I don't have to be somewhere at a specific time. So the price wins over dates. Like, right. the only time date really matters is if I'm in a country where the visa changes on me. Mm-hmm. And so um, that being, like, 
Thailand, you're allowed 30 days. You can extend it for 30 days, but then you've got to get the fuck out <laughs> or else, you know. Uh, similar to a lot of other countries, like in, I mean, the EU or the Shenzhen, Shenzhen, I can't, I never can pronounce that properly. It's okay, it's, I don't know what a, it is. It's so. a collective of European countries that are all under this. It's not EU, but it's the Schengen, and it's all these countries that agree to the similar visa rules. Mm -hmm. And basically for Americans, and I think even Canadians and some other countries, it's, uh, you get 90 days inside, but you have to within a six month term. So basically in my head, I think 90 days in 90 days out and then I can go back. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. And so those are the only times where like visa problems I have to get out, but I'll usually plan that well in advance. But other than that, it's just like price. I mean, I just find the cheapest thing and basically like these cool, like Momondo and Skyscanner. The cool thing is you could say, I'm in this country. Give me the cheapest flight anywhere and see oh, what yeah. comes up. And if I want to go there, then I'll go there. And so, like, I could be in Thailand and be like, uh, the cheapest flight anywhere in Southeast Asia, which is really cheap. You can get, like, a $45 flight anywhere in Southeast Asia. Wow. Yeah. And so you just pick one that you like and that you want to go to, and you just go there. I'm flying home next month, and it's going to cost me $300, and it's a two-hour flight. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So nuts. you're making yeah. me very envious in this moment. <laughs> well, you know what's nuts is, like, I did this in January. I was like, I'm going to fly to Thailand, but I was in New Hampshire at the time, and... uh Actually, my mother found me a flight to San Francisco for like 200 something bucks. And so I spent a day in San Francisco, booked a flight from San Francisco to Chiang Mai, Thailand for $250. It's a 16 hour flight, but I had a 16 hour layover in China. So it was like a 32 hour trip of sorts. Gross. Uh, but $250. Yeah. And I had like brand new movies on the flight like i was watching all sorts of stuff like on the plane i didn't have to download netflix and stuff it was beautiful yeah. so it, it's still a normal yeah. like one of those nicer planes yeah like mo across. most planes i mean any plane that's going over the pacific you're gonna get great service yeah i guess you kind of have to you you can't take a spirit plane no 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 across no. water yeah that you can barely it. take a spirit plane across the country <laughs> yeah let alone <laughs> yeah but it's thirty dollars <laughs> yeah it's nuts yeah because those those planes they have to be the big ones because they have to carry all the fuel because the only reason I do layovers is because they land the closest land ever. Like they, it's either South Korea or China mm -hmm. and they land the first place they can get so they can refuel and then fly back. Cause like I was on the, my plane actually, we flew from San Francisco to, um, I want to say like Shanghai maybe. And then we fueled in Shanghai so that we could fly to Kunming, China, which was the final destination for that flight. So we had to get off the plane, hang out in the airport while they were refueling, and then get back on the same plane. That's cool. Yeah, it was nuts. Did you start picking up language? Like any, um, anything in China? Or? No, no, not at all. Like none. <laughs> <laughs> Classic American. Yeah. I think the only, um, the only language I ever picked up was like hello and thank you. Yeah. That's kind of the important like, stuff. Hey, yeah, right. Thanks for not being mad at me for not knowing your yeah, language. Let me be nice to you. Yeah. You know, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, most of them speak English to you. So it really doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it matters in the sense that like that would be courteous and, a, you know, a nice person thing to do. Yeah. But I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty soon those Google ear things, whatever they are. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be universal. Well, actually, it was crazy because when I was in China, so I landed in Kunming, China, and English, no, no, just <laughs> English isn't there. Yeah. And um, I booked a hotel, had them pick me up, and I had this, like, crazy, it was winter time, it was cold, and they're not really into, like, heaters, okay, which is a weird thing. And so um, they picked me up, and... This guy was like, the driver had like blankets on him with his window open. It was freezing. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And um, then I get there. I get to the hotel and they're like, you have to pay uh, in cash. I'm like, I don't, I don't have China money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. I don't have any cash on me. And so they're like, oh, and it took, I landed at like midnight or something. And it took a, like, 
we're trying other things like you can pay through WeChat, which is like their sort of Facebook or whatever. Yeah. And trying to set that up didn't work so well. They drove me to another hotel to see if my credit card worked at the hotel. That didn't work. So then they drove me back to the airport where I could like find an ATM where my card could work. And by like one thirty in the morning, I finally got cash. Which equivalent to twelve dollars <laughs> for all of that driving for the, the whole like for the hotel for the night. Oh, yeah! Oh, wow, yeah. I think it was. I don't know what their currency is called. I can't remember, but yeah, it was twelve dollars. And that's insane. And then I get to my room, and you know, it's the hole in the floor toilet, and the room has no heating in it, mm-hmm. and there's just like a, a heater blanket, one of those like you turn on the blanket heats up or whatever. That was it. So it's freezing in my room smoking's a thing in the room so all the rooms oh, smell yeah. like cigarettes so i'm in a freezing room and i travel minimally i travel with a 24 liter backpack and that's it so i don't have a lot of winter stuff because i don't plan on traveling to these places yeah mm-hmm. and so i just i'm fucking freezing like i turned on the shower put it up to heat to see if like the steam could warm up the room <laughs> but just made it ice in the air <laughs> yeah but it was just pure mayhem but the entire time i'm talking to these people i have google translate up and it just converts into the symbols. I'm just like, I hope this is what you mean. Like, <laughs> and so we were just com- giving each other each other's phones with the translation, hoping that it translates well. And it was nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. But other than that, like everywhere else, English. I think the only other place that I actually had to learn language was um, Colombia. Mm-hmm. And but I mean, I did that whole quintessential. I learned three years in Spanish in high school. So I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but surprisingly enough, you pick it up rather quickly um, if you've got an idea of like how to enunciate words and stuff. I feel like you kind of have to. Yeah. I, like it's like, oh, you need to communicate or you're going to die. Exactly, right? <laughs> it's like learn my language or get the fuck out. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, did you run into any uh, any weird sketchy stuff this time? Any? Um, no, not much sketchy stuff. I almost got arrested in Portugal, though, which was pretty bonkers. Fucking Portugal. Drugs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was it for drugs? <laughs> well, it was really weird. Um, I was... Uh, there's this one tram that's a really popular tram downtown area that a lot of people take pictures in front of because it's like a very almost vertical tram. And so at night, because the road that this tram is on, all the bars are on the same road. and But the bars are like a closet. You go in the bar, you buy a drink, you go outside and hang out in the street. So the, the streets are flooded, so they just shut down the tram at night. Or else they'll just be running over people, uh, which is okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's fine. But this tram everybody takes pictures of. It's super popular. You could probably look up Instagram in Portugal, and this tram's probably half of them. Mm-hmm. And so a bunch of my friends were all hanging out, and a couple of them jumped up on top of the tram to sit on it. And then a bunch of us got down, and we took a big group picture, all of us on the tram. And so a bunch of people were getting everybody off. We already took the picture. And uh, I'm helping one person down, and I'm wearing this necklace. And their belt like caught the necklace and ripped the necklace off. So I'm like, oh, no. So I go to pick up the necklace. And when I come up, everybody that I left off the tram is like gone. I don't see them. And in front of me are two officers carrying like M80s. I'm like, or not M80s. That's like a grenade, right? I don't know. Machine guns. Yeah. They had machine guns. I'm not a gun guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a big gun. Yeah, they had big guns. They weren't handguns. And they were wrapped around them like this. And then they're like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? I'm like. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> and he just like came after me. I was and, getting my necklace. <laughs> yeah, I was just picking up my necklace. He's like, you can't be standing on those things. And I was like, I was kind of drunk, so I didn't know what I was supposed to argue with. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm sorry, officer. Like, I was just like, yeah, I guess I did something wrong. I just really don't know what it was. And I then, wasn't on the top part. I was at the bottom. It's yeah, fine. We're good Like, here. I could have argued it, but I was too, like, not there to, like, really communicate with him enough and then like in the distance i could see this like old lady like just like pointing at me and being really mad but i think she was speaking in portuguese so i didn't i don't know what she was saying yeah uh but it was me and this other girl she was norwegian and so he's like where are you guys from and i was like "Uh she's like (laughs) she's like norway he's like do they do you do this to your statues in norway and in my head i was like I mean, yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, if I see a statue, I'm going to get on it. We, <laughs> that's what they're we, there for. We literally yeah. climb inside the Statue of Liberty. They have yeah, stairs. Right? Like, yes, what do you... We, we do climb in on our stuff, like... And I was like, but it was all in my head. And I was like, sorry, officer. He's like, if you do this again, I'm going to have to take you in. And I was like, well, that's the last thing I want to do is be in jail in another country. Yeah. So that, like that, that, that was the closest it got. Like, I feel like that wouldn't end well. I just no. Not. Yeah, especially when their their officers are strapped like military servicemen. You're like, yeah. yeah. What goes on, on the other side of that, Jill? What so. What were the other, like the Southeast Asia com- uh, countries, what were their police like? Their police were pretty cool. Um, I mean, Thailand's sort of militarized police in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, they're there uh, really to deal with their own stuff. Um, the only time they really come after tourists in a sense is uh, riding mopeds and scooters around. Like, they have, like traffic stops for scooters so they pull every single scooter over and as long as you have a international driver's license to ride a motorcycle mm-hmm. you're good to go but you know most tourists don't know that yeah so um they just you know oh you don't have a you don't have an international license give me 500 baht and uh you'd be on your way <laughs> you know and so they just like take money from you and what is that converse i think that's to. like uh like 12 dollars, 15 dollars, maybe so okay. you're like okay here you go <laughs> on i go yeah here's 18 dollars. yeah be good and so you just be like yeah i'm here for another two days he's like well i don't want to see you run around because <laughs> like their ticket they give you a ticket and they're like this ticket's good for three days so that means like you're allowed to still use the scooter for three days oh okay and you're like oh i already got pulled over seat and they're like <laughs> okay and then after three days, they'll just do it again. But the weird thing is... You're basically that. buying the pass. You yeah, buy- you buy a pass <laughs> to ride the scooter for three days. 15 bucks. It's a day pass. Yeah. But then, like, you find out really quickly that their their stops are at very specific locations at very specific times. So all you do is you just avoid that area. Mm-hmm. And you're good to go. That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> just avoided them. Just figured it out. Yeah. Beat the system. <laughs> yeah. And it's really funny because, like, then you, like, know where it is. So then you walk past to see how many people are getting got at that point in time. Mm-hmm. You're like, busted, busted, <laughs> busted. You idiot. <laughs> you guys are dumber than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's it's almost a rite of passage. I think every single person I ever met has been pulled over at least once or twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been pulled over three times, but I've only had to pay once. The other times they just let you go? Or did you have your day pass? Well, I had my pass. Well, I have an international license. So last year when I got pulled over, they're like, this is fine. And then this year they noticed that we all picked up that international license is a thing we need. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, you don't have a motorcycle license. I'm like, this isn't a motorcycle. This is a (laughs) fucking scooter. Yeah. (laughs) This bitch maxes out at 15 miles an hour. I think I'm okay. Yeah. If I'm if I'm speeding in this and I get in an accident, I'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a trip. <laughs> We're talking like Vespa scooters, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did they have um? Have you seen Lime bikes or like Lime scooters out and about? Yeah, the only time I saw I haven't I haven't seen scooters abroad, but they do have like city bikes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You when can I, rent bikes. When I went to London, they had city bikes. Yeah. But I've seen. I know UCF just got Lime bikes. Okay. But when I was in Austin, they had uh, little electronic scooters oh which was yeah great because you didn't have to get on a bike right yeah and i saw was... those in louisville recently they had, oh, they had bird scooters yeah that was the other one that was the competing one that they yeah had. that's the only time i've ever seen them but apparently because i have a new hampshire driver's license now and it's all white they can't scan it <laughs> so people from new oh, hampshire that's right. check yourself because <laughs> you can't ride these scooters apparently <laughs> Oh, that's funny. They can't scan yeah. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there for hours. I was like, come on. I was like up here and in there. It didn't work. So What did you do? Did you t- can you type in? You can't type it in. It's really? scan your license or nothing. And I was like, well, well, I guess nothing's where I'm going with this. <laughs> fuck you, New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? God damn it. Way to fuck me over. Yeah. God. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Did we talk about where you're going next? Um, Do you want no, to talk about that? I can. So uh, I'm going to be less professionally homeless because I actually Aww. have an apartment now in Brooklyn, New York. So I'm that, moving to Brooklyn. That feels like you're unprofessionally homeless now. Yeah, I'm yeah. unprofessionally homeless. You're being demoted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, um, 
Yeah, my goal was basically to... Actually, I want to step back a bit and say the reason I'm doing New York is because as a traveler for so long and meeting everybody abroad and being like, oh, I've made all these friends. Now for like, stop traveling. They'll just never hang out with those people again. Mm-hmm. And so that's a really hard thing to like deal with. And so one of my friends actually explained to me, he's like, well, if you go back to the United States, like New York, San Francisco, LA, those are big cities. Travelers go there outside the country. So if you want, to have your traveler friends ever visit you those big hubs is basically where it's at because i mean i've already run into travelers in new york city that are from like australia and stuff yeah germany and so that's a city that if your friends are nomads they're not just going to completely ignore north america they'll pop in but when they pop in i mean they're not coming to orlando they'll go to right new york see the big city and stuff like that so i was like oh it's a great idea so like if i go to new york i still have a chance or an opportunity to say like anybody come on in because i'm here yeah so that i don't lose them so yeah yeah you were working on uh last time i remember you were on you were working on a on a passion project and i was just kind of curious as to what happened with that (laughs) i can't remember what that was i don't either it was something about you were trying to do uh like little units for nomads and it was they were going to be like stackable and they're going to be oh yeah the um the tiny home co-living community yeah that one yeah um I it's stuff. kind of on pause only because it's expensive <laughs> mm. uh, i still want to do it though i'm super fascinated by tiny homes i think they're super cool and being such a minimalist as i am um i don't really ever want to live in a big place because Tiny homes are super small, they're compact, but then they they leave room for the creativity aspect in you to be like, I have no room, so how do I deal with this? Mm-hmm. And so you find really unique creative ways to like live and survive in a tiny little space. And so I'm really passionate about the tiny homes and then to bring in the community of like uh, a bunch of them kind of stacked together around each other and then to have people come and go and experience that lifestyle. Um, would be really awesome plus i've actually i still research uh property all throughout america um to see if there's anything that meet my standards and price wise which um some places do i found one place in maine that was like by the way my standards if you want to know are crazy high and i need i need a connection to water i need to be on top of a mountain and or hill and um, I need to be close enough to a city or airport so when people fly in, it's easy to pick them up. So this is for the the little, the small living? The small living community. That okay. It would be like a hotel of tiny homes, mm-hmm. which they do exist throughout America. There's one in Portland. There's one in Sarasota, actually. The Sarasota hmm. one's cool because all the tiny homes look like lifeguard stands. They're that small? The, oh, oh, no, not, they the, look not like the chairs, them. not the chairs. No, no, no. That's, that's what I was no, no, yeah. Say. Yeah, you just live on a chair. It's yeah. great. <laughs> you get a closet. It's nah. minimalist living, but like it's just a chair. It's just a chair. It's yeah. just a chair. <laughs> you hang your clothes under the chair. <laughs> um, no, like those, like the Baywatch things. Gotcha. Those big okay. buildings. They look like that stuff. Um, it, it reminds me a lot yeah. of uh, college dorms. Yeah. Where you have, you have a little bit of space and it's all you need, but all your time is meant to be spent like community-wise. Exactly. Yeah, and so that's kind of the intention was, like, have a couple of buildings that are far enough apart that you can, like, be peaceful with yourself, or and then one big building in the middle that everybody can congregate around. Because, I don't know if I talked about this in the last podcast, but, like, one of my excitement is, like, to do the whole sustainability stuff where it's, Mm -hmm. like, off-the-grid electric, off-the-grid power. I mean, that's the same thing. Uh, Water, I mean. (laughs) Off-the-grid water. But then also, like... The whole idea was sort of popu- uh, pollution-free, and that means power pollution, uh, light pollution, sound pollution, so all sort of pollution. So there would be events where we'd have like silent discos so that you could still party, yeah. but it's super quiet. And then there would also be nights where like all the power goes out, and then you just get to stare at the stars because hopefully the property I buy is far enough away that you can see stars, you know? So this is like some of the gnarly So you found one in Maine that you don't want to get. I found one in Maine. Actually, I found one in Maine... It was uh, last year, October, I found one in Maine that was on a mountain that 
the land went all the way to the ocean, which was super gnarly. Um, and it was like 25 grand for the, the land. Wow. But I don't know why I, I didn't. I was poorer than I was than I am now. <laughs> it's a big investment. Yeah. To have to I mean, it's like, buy land. Do I have 25 grand? No, I don't. <laughs> I guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, this would be perfect, but it's not because I'm poor. Yeah. But seeking investment, and then there was just this whole rabbit hole of nonsense that I wasn't ready to go down because it's like, I am in no way professionally capable of doing any of these things. So, like, if I were seeking investment, they'd be like, oh, so what do you like in the tiny home realm? I'm like, I'm a web developer? (laughs) I can make a website? So it's like, no one would really trust me. So, yeah, that's kind of why I put it on pause. And basically what I would do is I'd build my own or do something along those lines, or maybe mm. contract people to build these, or mm-hmm. something where I could find myself in it to do it for myself. And then, so when I talk to other people who have money, I could say, "Yes, look, look at that. I did that." Yeah. So, trust <laughs> I, me. I have a tiny home. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. With it sounds like you're trying to start a cult. I'm just gonna put it out there. You I got mean, you got this big beard. Everything is away from society. <laughs> Bless you, son. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do start a cult, yeah. let me know. I mean, if I start a interested. cult, I think it would be a really fun cult to join. Yeah. Um, we're really, we're into flair, you know. <laughs> we really like that stuff. We would all wear one color, and you know, that type of stuff. Do you like need that. to have long hair and a beard. Just asking. That would be really I need neat. to start growing out if that's the case. And then, and then at, uh, what we'll do is um, I at the entrance. I also need to be a web developer. Yeah, Apparently. yeah. <laughs> At the entrance, any women who come in, they have to take a beard with them, and, like put it on. <laughs> yeah, so everyone has to equal have a beard. opportunity beards. I, yeah. yeah, everybody's got a beard. I agree Good, with I that. like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. We have figured out a cult. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, welcome to our cult. Internet. Yeah. Welcome to our even cult. dogs are welcome. They have little puppy beards. <laughs> <laughs> that would be adorable. <laughs> yeah. I just want a, a collection of, of puppy beards just, yeah. and puppies. Now <laughs> we'll have a whole puppy beard cult going on the side. You know, oh, be do beautiful. You, can. Can we get? Can you get Mona a puppy beard? I can. He has a dog now. I do have a dog. Oh, nice. She's in there, but yeah, she uh, she can. We can. She kind of has like whiskers. She's got little. Yeah. Yeah. What's that one dog that like looks like it has a beard at all times? Oh, the Scottish terrier. Scottish terrier. Scottish yeah. terriers. Yeah. Those are the only ones allowed in the cult now. Because <laughs> <laughs> they look- actually have beards. They have real beards. <laughs> have you looked at land in Scotland? Um, I haven't actually. I haven't looked at land outside of the United States because. Frankly, I don't understand it. Yeah, you know, I own, I know about it, but yeah, I haven't. You've seen it. I've seen it. I saw that there is land outside the United States. I hear that's a thing, and I look. I, I went to go look myself. It's Fake news. True. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fake news. Now, it's true. in your travels, <laughs> have you found any evidence that the world is round? Uh, I can't s- confirm nor deny that. Hmm. Yeah. So it's flat. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was really weird to see the edge of the earth while I was flying. <laughs> it, was, it was a giant experience, I can yeah. imagine. I can it was, imagine. It was unreal. Yeah. The problem is, is like, see, they trick you. What they do is um, at all the coastlines of all the countries, uh, they put clouds. So mm. what happens is when you, every time you fly out of the country, you fly through clouds. And so when you're above the clouds, you're like, I don't know. I'm, I might not even be above Earth anymore. I'm just above these little, you know, marshmallowy looking things. And then when you land, you land through clouds, so you have no idea. They get you every time. Hmm. You'll never know. It is flat. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. God, yeah, it's crazy. So what did you what did you miss this time? So you so you were here for a little bit. Yep. You left. You missed some stuff. Coming back, what it, what was one of the things that you were like, man, this, I I miss this. And what did you not miss as well? What is the other side of that coin? Yeah. Well, like we spoke about in the last podcast, I do not miss wiping my ass with toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> How is the, uh, <laughs> the day life? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bum gun the, the bum gun, yeah. I'll tell you it's what, uh, all of my cult tiny homes will have bum guns. <laughs> That's a guarantee. I'm excited for that. <laughs> This cult gets better and better every time we talk about I really, it. I really want to like create a GoFundMe of like just like raise awareness to America that bum guns are great. <laughs> really, I think it's that'll starting. be my nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> bum guns of America. Save, save the bum guns. Yeah. Save them. Yeah, it's my right to bear arms. <laughs> I remember you. You told me your passion project was clean water, so it's not much of a transition. From no, not clean at all. Water too. Yeah, I just want clean, clean water on my butt. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah clean water is a definitely important thing um especially like going to all these other countries where it's weird that uh when you go to a restaurant and you're like oh you know how i can save money i'll just order a water when the other countries you can't you have to pay for it because they can't afford it oh yeah i didn't even think about paying for water yeah, it's really weird. So, like, you go to any other country, you're like, oh, water. And they'll be like, that's $2. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't just have it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a one thing that's, like, really interesting. Um, maybe that's what I miss most is, like, free water, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, really poor answer there. Proud yeah. Of you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there are other things as well, like comfort, uh, knowing. I think uh, the hard part is, like, um, the what you – don't understand that you miss is the ability to know where everything is and what everything is because you've been living here for so long Mm -hmm. that you're like i am sick and i feel these symptoms so i'm just gonna go to cvs and buy this thing right but then you go in another country and you're like i'm sick oh shit (laughs) then you don't know i guess i'm just sick now (laughs) yeah this is my life um like i i got food poisoning in thailand i got um a skin infection in Bali and that shit was fucking terrible. It was awful. The skin infection was terrible because, uh, I went to an emergency clinic in Bali and was like, Oh, I have this thing on my leg now. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, Oh yeah, that's a, that's skin infection. We're going to, you know, it's, it's what it is now. And it hurts like, like the Dickens. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just like the Dickens. It hurts like the Dickens. You know, if you're on a pain scale, it's around Dickens hurt. <laughs> um, and so I can I can barely walk. I have a scooter and or a moped. And um, even when my foot is on it and hitting the bumps, it hurts. So, like, just movement in my leg hurts in general. Ugh. And even being vertical hurts. Like, horizontal is the only way it didn't hurt. And so I go there, and he's like, oh, yeah, well, here's some medicine, and whatever. And you're like, I understand some of these words. <laughs> and he's like, if it gets any bigger, or if it hurts any more in the next few days, come back and we'll... So, like, an infection has, like, pus inside. And basically, it's just a gigantic pimple at that point. Mm-hmm. Except the pus is just, like, dead cells because the infection's killing off everything. Cool. Um, Sounds great. Yeah, it's a fantastic time. <laughs> you know, it's a wild ride. Should be in Disney. <laughs> um and so I go back, and he's like, all right, uh, we're going to have to, like, you know, give it a little snip and start Ugh. releasing this stuff. But I don't know what, like, the C-Squad was there when I came back. Because, <laughs> like, they were like, I don't know what you're talking about, and we don't understand what you want us to do. And I'm like, cut it open and get the pus out. <laughs> it's real simple. It was really difficult to explain to them. And they're like, okay. And... <laughs> And um, they were definitely not knowing what they were doing because they were like, kind of like, looking at my leg, like curious what this is. Mm-hmm. But they contacted the doctor. He's like, yeah, just do this and this and this and you're good to go. And they're like, all right. So they take out a scalpel and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it <hurt> fucking so <laughs> bad. Oh, my God. And they're like. It's just blood. There's just you're just bleeding. There's no, there's no pus. <laughs> I'm like, well, you stabbed me. That's the wrong of leg. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And I'm like, oh, it was awful. And they're like, you're just bleeding. Like, there's no pus. And I'm like, oh, all right. And they're like, come back tomorrow when the doctor's in. Uh, like, now that we stabbed you, <laughs> yeah. get the fuck out. Yeah. So they gave me a bunch of pills and they taped me up and everything. And I went home and I just like passed out because of the pain. And I go back to the doctor the next morning and uh, he looks at it and he's and it's infected. No. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, if it wasn't then, it is now. Um, no, he looks at it and he's like, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, they didn't go deep enough. I got to do it again. <laughs> no. And I'm like, do you have a thing called Novocaine? <laughs> like, can you numb my leg? And he's like, yeah, I could do that. And so he like starts poking it a bit, putting a little Novocaine in it or whatever, or some sort of numbing agent. And he waits like two minutes and I've had my teeth pulled. I know that like, it takes a little longer than that for that shit to kick in. Cause like a dentist would like go out and like come back like 10 minutes later. And he's like, yeah. I think it's numb now. Yeah. He's like, 
<laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, we're good now. And he fucking does it again. Oh. <laughs> And, he's, and then all of a sudden, not only does he get in there, he starts wiggling it. Oh, no. <laughs> this keeps getting worse. Oh, God. And I'm just like, Argh! And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> this is your job. Oh. And so, uh, yeah, and then he starts, finally, pus starts, like, kind of coming out. But the problem is, is, like, first of all, you have an entire cyst that already hurts. And then you got a stab wound <laughs> that hurts a bit more. And I don't know if you've ever been stabbed before, but have you ever been stabbed and then all of a sudden they're poking you oh. in your stab wound? Oh. <laughs> so, I cannot say yes. So I'm stabbed and they're kind of like doing this a lot. And the Novocaine still is not kicking and in. And it's just not kicking in. I'm like, I feel everything. <laughs> this is my nightmare. And this was like early in the morning, so I didn't like really eat much. You guys are good at this. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, dying here and he wraps me up and he's like all right yeah you're good to go and like you know just keep every day and keep push pushing pus out and eventually it'll go away and so i leave and i'm like passing out while i'm like on my scooter so i go get food i'm passing out while i'm eating i'm like <laughs> i go home pass out again and i was just like in my bed for the rest of the week before i left and i still had the infection while flying to malaysia so oh. my entire leg blew up I had this like fat left leg and I was like, this is not good. So I went to Malaysia's <laughs> hospital, which was actually really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. The guy goes there and cause like not every time I was trying to push pus out, nothing was happening. I was like, the pus isn't coming out. Fuck. Like I'm going to have to like get surgery on this or something. So I go to Malaysia and I have a bandaid on it at this point. And the doctor's like, all right, let's see it. I'm like, yeah, there's not pus coming out. I open the bandaid and it just fucking falls out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just everywhere, just disgusting. And he's like, it's coming now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. But I was like, oh, man. It was like two, three weeks of just nightmare pain. And finally, by the time I left Malaysia, it was gone. But and a stab just, wound or two. Yeah, yeah. a few stab wounds. You know what's weird? It's like now there's a dent in my leg. <laughs> <laughs> it went from it a retracted. bubble to a dent. Like I squeezed out so much, I think I took a few muscle with it. Uh, it was just. Uh, how much of your leg did it take up? It, um, probably, I mean, it was like a golf ball sized bump. And then all of a sudden it started like making another bump somewhere else. I was like, no. Because <laughs> while I was in Malaysia, it made another bump. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like. The pus isn't coming out from this bump. So I actually, dumb idea, don't do this. Um, I went to the store. I bought a needle. I bought a lighter. And I bought some alcohol. I was like, well, they did it to me. I can do it to me, right? And so I'm in a fucking hostel in Malaysia. And I'm in the toilet with no air conditioning, fucking trying to stab myself in the other <laughs> bump just to hope that I can get pus out. Oh. I never got deep enough because I'm a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but eventually that went away too. So now oh. I just have a big dent in my leg. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get the infection? So I don't ever yeah, have that yeah, happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> good question. How, how uh, do I not get stabbed in the leg by terrible doctors? answer? I have no idea. Oh no, uh, they, they couldn't tell you. I have assumptions. Uh, so you know you get bug bites once in a while there, and it's just whatever. But then you scratch the bug bites, and they're kind of open wounds in a sense, like a scratch. Yeah, yeah. And so I scratched a bug bite down there. I remember having a bug bite there. Not knowing if it was a spider bite or like a mosquito or anything. I don't know. It was just a bug bite that was itchy. But then I went swimming. Yep. There you go. So I'm assuming that's what it was. Uh, I can't confirm nor deny whether it's the bug bite itself that did it or whether the collection of it all. I don't know. It was a, a perfect storm situation. But um, yeah. Make sure yeah. you don't have any open wounds when swimming abroad. Yeah. <laughs> or at all. Or at all, yeah. Or ever, yeah. yeah. It's a good rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, what's bringing you to New York? Finally, what, what's what's yeah, bringing so you back to the United States? One of my goals, because I've been doing freelance a bit, was like I want to keep traveling, but I'm exhausted, so I'm trying to slow down. And two things: New York, I want to see if I can get a New York client as a freelancing gig, and then two, New York's one of the not many, whatever opposite of many is. Few. few. <laughs> there we go. I'm a doofus. <laughs> One of the few uh, cities where you really don't need a car because their public transportation is actually fantastic. So what's that? Chicago, New York, San Francisco. Yeah. Maybe D.C. Seattle. 
DC, I don't think you need one. Yeah. On um, yeah, because the subway systems, right? Yeah. I mean, everywhere in the world, their subway systems are incredible. But then here, we have like three cities. We're a fucking huge country, and three cities are like, I guess we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> this seems yeah. like a good idea. Yeah. Just wait for Elon to finish building holes in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the tunnel system. I Tunnels, wish yeah. I got that flame, that not a flamethrower. The not a flamethrower, so yeah. Bad. So that they could ship it across the seas. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. It was, uh, I don't own a car, don't want to own a car, so I pick a pick a populous city that has a subway system, plus New York, New York money. If I get a New York client paying New York money, and I go back to Thailand, I'll be a dumb God. rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll the, be in a palatio estate. <laughs> yeah. The place you, so. you showed me, too, it's like it's in a great location. Yeah. I think you don't want to say it on, on here, but. Yeah. Yeah, but no, just I don't, but yeah, like a, you're just you're so close to so many things. I'm right next to a subway and I'm right next to a park, and um, you know that's all you really need. Right? Yeah. The weird thing though is I'm going into New York's winter, and I haven't dealt with the winter in a long time. I mean, living in <laughs> Florida for ten years, and so oh, yeah, no, I actually have yeah. to go to my parents' home and pick up winter clothes that I probably had when I was in high school. <laughs> so let's hope they still fit. Uh, I've been like, you know, eating less. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper that way. Yeah, just, right? Just save get money. More infections keep stabbing pus out. You <laughs> yeah, know? right? Just dent your whole body. Oh, it's fine. Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, start picking dents. <laughs> wow. Are those abs? No, they're dents. <laughs> I had a separate infection in yeah. all start of these places. Just building up my infection <laughs> properly located. Oh. <laughs> God, your leg is going to look like Edward James almost. Oh. Almost. Almost. Almost Edward James. Uh, almost. He's almost. That's, that's the name, right? That's the correct name. Almost. 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 I don't know. I haven't seen. Does it have a T a, in it? I don't it's think so. O L M A S. Almost. Almost. Uh, I don't know. He said Edward James. Almost. Let's let's say it fifty more times, and almost. that's the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, just wrap it up on almost, Edward James. Almost, We're almost. just gonna call it, the title for this will be Edward James. Almost. Almost. Maybe. <laughs> that's awesome, though. New York's yeah. a fun place. Yeah, it's been a wild ride and uh, super fun. I recommend everybody do it. Um, one of the things that I want everyone to learn from any of this or when I'm traveling is it's a lot easier than you think. It's so easy to do. The hard part is uh, starting. That's it. Because once you start, you're like, oh, wow, that's easy. Because, I mean, planes are everywhere. And right. you just get on one, and then you're somewhere else in the world, and then you're just doing that. Uh, most of the world speaks some sort of English, so, I mean, everywhere I went, they spoke English, and it's not as scary as you think, and people actually don't hate Americans. <laughs> they just think our president's hilarious. Yeah. That's it. Damn. I also think he's hilarious yeah. and terrifying. Yeah. yeah. He's an absolute riot. But <laughs> I do pay taxes here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's devastating. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I, f I feel like that's how it is with, with most things. Just getting yeah. started in that initial getting over the hump. Exactly. It's, it's the hard part. So, so scary to start. I mean, I broke down. I had some anxiety breakdown at one point when I started. I was like, I don't, what am I doing in my life? This is so dumb. Like, what, what's, and then you get there and you're like, oh. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Like, I mean, for me, going to Thailand is just as easy if I were just to fly to, I don't know, Austin, Texas or something. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's just super easy to do now. You just buy a flight, you get there. And as long as you kind of understand how to use the Internet, um, you can get about anything you want. Um, and then then everybody's everybody's everywhere now. The, the amount of digital nomads that I run into are expats or travelers or tourists everybody's doing it together and you just bump into each other. And the cool thing is, is like, I'm doing it. You're doing it. We have something in common now. So now we're friends. Yeah. We could have nothing else in common, but because we both travel now we're best friends. And then you just go from there and then everything's simple. And then you can start hopping with those people too. Yeah. You, you can go with them. You can not go with them. Like, I mean, my first year I went everywhere where other people recommended I go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I had no idea where I was going. And then people were like, oh, just go to Thailand. I'm like, all right, I'll go That's to Thailand. That's where I'm going now. Yeah. Buy a flight, get there, get a hotel, you know, Airbnbs everywhere too, 
you know? Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of places. I mean, this isn't, you can't go everywhere in the world because you can't, like, pop up in North Korea. Yeah, you can't go to North Korea. Can? I mean, you can. Maybe you can like, leave. I don't think they'll. Do they, do they let people in? Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can get in. I thought you had to have. I some think sort the American passport is a little harder to do, but um, mm. yeah, people have gone. Like, uh, there's some. There's a snowboarder on YouTube who went snowboarding, and like, he had this like palace of a hotel to himself. Really? And then they had this epic mountain that you could snowboard on, but because like, ninety nine percent of the country's impoverished mm -hmm. no one can use it so <laughs> who uses it him him yeah, he's that's, the one that's the one guy that got to use it so yeah people go not all of them come back normal or alive yeah but you know i guess that's the price you pay if you choose to go to that country of all the other ones that's true you know yeah so you're, you're you're playing with house money a little bit and exactly. that happens yeah you might get a your legs broken like that yeah. so has there been any countries you avoided? You were like, no, I'm not going to go there. Uh, pretty much uh, the entire Middle East. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably would never go there. Although I'm not really into the deserts anyways. Not that their countries are anything. But maybe like Israel or something I'll go to. But pretty much most of the Middle East I would probably avoid just because like not only like whatever's going on in the country or religious aspects, that has nothing to do with that. I think like internet's difficult to deal with over there um because i think most of them are running through like tour browsers just to get outside of the internet you know oh yeah um because i have to i have to pick places where i get good internet i get good housing good food and, which is a lot of countries but you know there are some and i'll just avoid all of those yeah there some just aren't built for yeah the infrastructure's not there so i just don't go yeah you know it has nothing to do with it. If, if if i was traveling and i'm like i'm just gonna go for nothing and do nothing there then yeah maybe i might not avoid them as much like mm -hmm. i really want to go to nepal and i don't know what their infrastructure is like but i probably even if i'm there like i'm not going to nepal just so i can work online yeah I'm going yeah. to nepal to climb some mountains and stuff you yeah. know so that's sort of why I, I pick my countries per their infrastructure it has nothing to do with the fact that those countries are warring all the time? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm totally into war. It's really <laughs> fun. It's a hobby of mine. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. I already talked about how I'm not a gun guy, but I love guns. Yeah, love them around me. <laughs> just, These guns. Just, These guns right here. Yeah. I'm surrounded always. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah. I don't avoid, I don't pick to avoid, I just pick the other you ones. You pick what's going to be most <laughs> yeah. convenient. Yeah. It it's just like, tends not to be Middle East. I don't do a lot of... No, not you. I do a lot of yes, you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> does does America have a lot of stuff set up for for similar things? Like, could you digital nomad in America pretty well? Yeah, you can. Just pricier. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's pricier. So the housing is a problem for America uh, because it's expensive. You know, mm -hmm. every. I mean, what what are the cheapest places you can go? Like Minnesota, maybe Missouri, uh, Wisconsin. But it's like, I mean. Besides some of the cities, like, what am I doing there? Yeah. Because the idea of a digital nomad is not only just to be in a new location and a cool location, but, like, your weekends are what are really important to you. So you want to be able to be – your weekend is everybody else's dream vacation, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the goal. So you're not being like, oh, I'm going to digital nomad to uh, North Dakota because, yo – <laughs> Am I right? They have oil. <laughs> Yo, I can't wait to go like farm a bit. On the <laughs> you know, can't wait to see all the flat land. Yeah, so that's kind of why, like Denver. I know a lot of digital nomads that have like kind of like planted themselves in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, San Diego, L.A., Portland. I mean, the hot spots. But really. still, yeah, yeah. You you could do it, but the housing is just more expensive. Plus, like subletting, because like most of the time you're only there for a month at a time. And so, like, most of America's infrastructure is based on like, signing a year lease. Oh, is it not like that in other countries? No. So, you can get uh, a lot of countries, their accommodations are built around um, universities. Okay. So, they go by university schedules. So, you could do, like, three-month leases a lot or huh. month to months, and they don't mind. Mm -hmm. Where here, we love contracts, and we love roping you in, and we love suing you. Yep. So <laughs> it's my favorite. Yeah. There's a lot more trust abroad, I guess, is really what it boils down to. Because, I mean, anywhere in Europe, you can walk in public with an alcoholic beverage and no one gives a fuck. Here, you get arrested. It's like, yeah, except for shit. like three places. Yeah. 
Except for like what Savannah and um, the, the main one, Louisiana. Oh, New Orleans. In New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you can walk around with an open. Yeah, beverage. so it's like itty bitty places, which is super cool, and I love those places a lot. But it's just like, but we also have a problem, not only opinion, but like our trust really is like we're a rowdy bunch. Yeah. And uh, you don't want that to happen. Like, because I think, like, what's it over in England or something, like, uh, alcohol's banned in soccer stadiums now. <laughs> For that the exact sense. same reason, yeah. we probably can't do it publicly here, you know. <laughs> that makes <Fights>. sense. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's sort of a similar situation, but it's just cooler. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's cool. I mean, that's yeah. something that ever since you started doing it and when we did the, the train trip. Yeah. Like, I, I loved that. It was yeah. fun. Like, it was it was simple. I just, you know, we worked when we could and otherwise we met, like, that group of Amish people. Yeah, that was really neat. Talk yeah. to the meeting the strangers like that, and those two construction dudes that were like very self-aware that they're really stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very interesting. Like we had computers in front of us, and they're like, "Man, I'm too dumb for that." <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> it's a computer, cool. bro. It's not rocket science. What are we, yeah. yeah, we don't work for NASA. Yeah, but it's like you were saying, just because we were all all of us were traveling on this train, we had that immediately in common. Yeah, one thing in common. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. It was very fun. I think that's a good note to to close on. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Wow. All right, guys. That's it for uh, our, what is it, episode 19? 19. Pro- professionally Homeless Round 2, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, bungalow. Bungle- bungalow. Bungalow. Oh, missed opportunity. Oh, well. Well, we still haven't titled it, so. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> professionally like, Homeless Cruise uh, Control. <laughs> Ooh. That might be it. We'll see. <laughs> Professionally Homeless 2, Speed. Wait, I don't know. I, I don't know. No. You <laughs> Working <lost>. title. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share, let everybody know what we're doing, and uh, we'll we'll probably have Dustin back another time when he's less homeless. He's yeah. going to be professionally homed and uh, house trained. Is that? Are you going to put a That's bum gun? Up. Let's end on that. Are you going to put a bum gun in your apartment? You I'm should. definitely going to figure it out. <laughs> it's a goal of mine to try. Just going to strap a hose to the sink. We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> if I could just get a steady stream of water near my toilet, that's all I need. <laughs> awesome. All right, Perfect. guys. Say, thank you so much, and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. A reverberation. Oh. To you, this my is, friend. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>